This spring I headed out to the suburbs to witness a natural event that I've never seen before. In fact, few people actually have. When conditions are right, a silent army emerges from hiding to begin a journey. A journey which sometimes puts them on a collision course with human development. And a lot of them don't survive. That's where I come in. This year I got to join a team of dedicated biologists and volunteers with the Amphibian Crossing Project. And I had a burning question for them. Why does the amphibian cross the road? Come on, you know you were thinking it. The amphibians are simply migrating from the upland forest habitat where they spend most of their year to the breeding pools where they go to mate and lay their eggs. Mackenzie Hall, a biologist with the Conserve Wildlife Foundation of New Jersey, heads the program. They need to get from here to here, and if there's a road right here, then there's mm -hmm. going to be a big problem for those amphibians. Mm -hmm. Bob Hamilton is a volunteer who found this crossing site two years ago. I mean, we crossed a couple hundred probably the first year, uh, and then it was, what was it, around 1200, 1160-something. These amphibians migrate in such huge groups because they're in a time crunch. The vernal pools in which they breed are filled with water for only a short amount of time. So on those first rainy nights of spring, as soon as the ground has thawed, they make their mad dash to the pool. And it's something I've wanted to see for 10 years. So we just help them along in whatever direction they're going. Yes. Easy, right? This is a spring peeper. Such a tiny little thing is responsible for those big loud peep peeps that you hear in the springtime. Let's nudge him and see if he'll... Well, he's going the wrong direction. Oh dear, go this way. Just, oh, wrong direction. Left, left at Albuquerque. Oh no, what is that? A leaf. This is a wood frog. This is the frog that can freeze almost solid in the wintertime and then spontaneously can come back to life. Natural antifreeze. Ah! And these guys often help themselves across the road. Go, go, go. Now he's the poster child for this whole movement right now, isn't yeah. he? Not that leaf I keep running into. Dagnabbit. Mackenzie and team aren't just doing a feel-good project. They're collecting hard data on the number and kinds of amphibians that cross the site. Two American toads, one spring peeper. Two spotted, two peepers. Two spotted, three peepers. I did get a spotted on my way up here. Okay. Italian. Great. Living? Yes. Yay! There are some really good reasons for having amphibians around. Namely, their huge role in the food web. You know, salamanders are carnivores, they eat bugs of all varieties. Young frogs eat algae and help keep our water clean and filtered. And they're food for turtles and snakes and bears and wood thrushes and owls and all kinds of things. So if something happens to the amphibians, then what's gonna happen to all the things that eat those sure. critters? Yeah. Amphibians have very absorbent skin, which makes them actually very good indicators of the health of the environment. If they get sick, it's a clue to us that something's going on. This is called a Jefferson salamander. This is considered a special concern species in New Jersey. They uh -huh. are purely dependent on vernal pools for breeding. Okay, so the they can't go... Like these are very special. Um, they can't do lakes and rivers or anything like that. Correct, yeah. Okay. Consequently, they're a little rarer than the other species that we encounter on the roads. I've had one <laughs> crawl inside my rain jacket before, so <laughs> let's make sure he doesn't do that. One thing I noticed, when the rain comes out, so do the amphibians. One Jefferson, three toads, car coming. Didn't slow down. This is the fourth spotted. Oh, he's not a little peeper. I just like counting peepers. One peeper, two peeper, three peeper, four. Toad, number five. Six wood frogs, six toads. My hands are so cold, all they can do is the claw right now, so this works well. Uh, road, uh, I mean, car, fast. Seven spotted. my 11th spotted salamander. Right behind you. <laughs> They wait for you to turn your back and then they scoot their little tushies across the uh, car. I hope there's nothing there. Ah! Darn it. Uh, he's still alive. Oh God. This is what can happen when the roads cross through salamander territory. I guess when that happens, you just keep going to see if there's any more that can be saved. 
He was a spotted. Was spotted. He had just about made it across, <gasps> but his tail had been hit. Ah. Oh. So even the lucky ones sometimes don't go uninjured. So, but uh, can they heal from that? Do we know? They can heal from that. Yeah, mm -hmm. amphibians are really resilient in terms of healing. So unless it's a wound to the core body, he should be just fine. The cars are really relentless. That makes about 10 for the last 15 minutes, which is above the number of cars per hour that we would assume could kill about 75% of everything that tries to cross. Mackenzie bases this statement on a control study at another site, where observers did not attempt any rescues, but simply recorded the amount of traffic, the number of amphibians that tried to cross, and the number that didn't make it. What they found was that a traffic rate of only 15 cars per hour killed more than half of all amphibians that tried to cross. At our site, the traffic rate was 60 cars per hour. 60 cars per hour could have easily killed 80, 90, you know, we don't know exactly, but right. it would have been extremely high. But it was down to 16% with down us there. 16, yeah. Okay. yeah so that, that makes me bad. feel good. That isn't bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One night during a break in the rain, we went exploring near the Vernal Pool and stumbled across a tiny traveler nearing the end of his journey. Hey, check it out. Hey! Oh my goodness, look at him! <laughs> this little spotted salamander had traveled almost a quarter mile on tiny feet through dangerous territory to get here. But this is what the process, the journey, would look like if there wasn't a road in between. Heading on down to the vernal pool. It was inspiring to see. And I understood why these hardy volunteers braved the cold, the rain, and the cars to do it. You have to be dedicated. Yeah. You, have to, you actually have to care. I mean, you can't go in half-hearted because it's not worth it otherwise. For me, it was definitely worth it. I directly saved the lives of some animals threatened by human development. And I felt like I made a difference. I think I'll be back next year with another layer of fleece and some dry socks. I love seeing nature in action. You know, you have to be paying attention, otherwise it goes by unnoticed. But we saw it. That's so cool. If you want to find out about the Amphibian Crossing Project and other volunteer opportunities at Conserve Wildlife, visit their website at conservewildlifenj.org.